You're listening to the Option Alpha podcast from OptionAlpha.com, where we show you how to make smarter trades, learn how the stock market really works, and generate consistent monthly income. Monthly income. Now, your host and head trader at OptionAlpha.com, Kirk Duplessis. Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com working every single week to make this the most popular investing podcast offered online and in iTunes because it's based on one thing and one thing only and that's helping you guys make smarter trades. So again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. I've got a really cool episode, something that I've often tried to talk about and tried to email back and forth with people on, but as always, your questions end up becoming the content that we produce on the show and so please keep it coming because this is a great way for me just to get my thoughts and my experience into audio format for you guys. And so in today's show, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze eight different short strangles for both returns, their ROIs, and their margin requirements or their initial margin requirements. Now, if you're an iron condor trader or a credit spread trader, basically the same concept will be true. You just have to analyze it based on the spread width that you're basically looking at. So if you're doing a $2 wide spread or three or five or 10 or whatever, in this case, I really, really want to focus here on these short strangles because I often get the question, and this is where the show comes from. I often get the question like, how do we know what good pricing is on a short strangle? And the reality is that it's not as easy to determine the best pricing when you're looking at a trade on a short strangle or short straddle because it's a lot easier with a credit spread since you know defined risk. You can look at five credit spreads that are $5 wide and four of them may give you $50 and one may give you $60. And that's really easy to look at because you know you're looking at a $5 wide credit spread. With short strangles and straddles in particular, it's much harder to determine what type of premium you should be collecting or what is a good premium or how much money you should be collecting. And what I often tell people and try to email back and forth and do with coaching students is you should be looking at it on a relative basis to other other securities that are out there to be traded. So you should be looking at and constantly looking at different pricing, not every day, but maybe a couple times a week, what straddle pricing is like, how much you can get for a regular one standard deviation, 70% probability of success straddle, how much credit you can take in versus how much margin is required to hold that position. Because remember, your trade entry and your position size is going to be based on that initial margin requirement. So that or looking at it based on margin and return is going to be a good way to look at things apples to apples and compare a lot of different securities, which are maybe different prices and different margin requirements to one another for the sake of making a trade. Okay. Now we'll go over some tips at the end as far as, you know, key points to think about and little, you know, tips and tricks that I'll kind of add in here. But in today's podcast, we're going to be looking at eight different short strangles, a combination of ETFs and stocks, and also a combination of high and low volatility security so that you can see the differences that these have, okay? And it's not all one-dimensional, meaning it's not all a one-way relationship, meaning that all the time when implied volatility is higher, you always get a better return or lower margin. It doesn't work like that. It does have to do a little bit with the stock that's being traded, how volatile that stock is in the past, the price of the security. So there are a lot of factors that go into it, but Hopefully this show will give you a lot more context as to how you should start pricing and looking at short strangles. Now, as just a disclaimer, if you don't have time to find trades like this and to analyze trades like this because you either A, work a job, or B, just don't want to do it, then this is why we created our pro and elite membership at Option Alpha because we will send out the trading alerts that I do on a real-time basis. So as soon as I make a trade, we'll send it out with a description of what it is, how we got into it, the probability of success, the whole deal. And then each and every night we post a video update that tells you guys exactly what we did and kind of walks through it on screen with videos and charts and looking at trade tabs and analyze tabs and all that stuff. So again, if you don't have time to find trades like this or don't want to analyze trades on this level, I completely understand. That's why we created the pro side of the membership. You don't have to learn. You can learn for free on Option Alpha, but if you want to get trades like this or my trades, then you've got to sign up for a pro membership. Now, as we go through these, again, each trade that we're looking at is the one standard deviation short strangle with a 70% probability of success. So basically selling the 15% 
probability of being in the money options on each side or about the 15 delta on each side. The first one that we're going to look at is XLU. XLU is an ETF. It's an utilities ETF. Right now it has IV, implied volatility ranking at 58. The stock is currently at 48. So that's where the price of the stock is. It's not a low price stock, not necessarily a high price stock either. Okay. And this is what we're going to do and go through all of these. Again, if you want to see all these in like chart format, you can go over to optionalpha.com slash show 73. Again, that's just number 73. So first one is XLU has IV ranking of 58. The stock is trading at 48. If you were to sell the short strangle, you could collect $58 in premium per short strangle that you sold. The margin required for XLU is $722 per strangle. So that's a return of 8.03%. So actually not too bad. It's definitely one of our lower ones as we're going to look at, but it's not too bad. It's an 8% return on your capital based on the initial margin requirement. Okay. Now this will start coming into play and start building some context as we start looking at other securities. Now, in the case of SPY, this is the second one that we're going to look at. IV is a little bit lower than XLU at 46. The stock price or XL or ETF price for SPY is $211 right now. So it's much, much higher price wise. And what that means is that when you sell a short strangle, you're going to collect more premium, but also have higher margin requirements. So the premium that you can collect for a short strangle in SPY right now is $192 versus the $58 that you could collect with XLU. For SPY, the margin required to hold that position is $3,290, uh, $3, so return on capital of 5.83%. So you can see on a relative basis now, and this is where we start building some context in here, when you look at XLU, it's much better to maybe do two contracts of XLU and collect $58 a piece and have a much higher return on capital than to do even one contract of SPY, right? Because you're going to collect a higher dollar amount doing an SPY strangle, but your return on capital, at least right now, how it stands right now, is much, much less for SPY. In fact, it is the lowest of the eight different short strangles that we're going to look at today. All right, so let's keep going here. We're going to look at the next one, which is EWW. This is a Mexico ETF. And right now, IV rank is at 100 for EWW. Yes, you heard me right. It's at 100, meaning it's never been higher than where it is right now in the last year. To sell a short strangle in EWW, which is trading at about $49, you can collect $93 in premium for a short strangle. And your margin requirement, get this, is only $495. Now that means that your return on capital for an EWW trade right now is 18.78%. You're probably thinking to yourself, wow, that's significantly higher. And mainly that significant higher return on capital is because of higher implied volatility and higher option pricing. So again, it's kind of building context around why we look at multiple types of trades when we're thinking about getting into a position. Yes, SPY on a dollar basis pays the most right now of the ones we've looked at at $192. But on a return basis, we could do four or five of these EWW positions and get much, much more premium for about the same capital margin required and a much higher return on capital, okay? And again, all of these, full disclosure, all of these have a 70% chance of success. So now you're starting to see how you can compare one against another. The next one that we're going to look at, the last ETF, is GDX. This is the Gold Miners ETF, favorite trading vehicle of ours over the last month and a half or so, really last two and a half months. IV right now is at 40. The stock is trading at 26. If you sold the short strangle, you would get a $68 credit and your margin per strangle is $560. So a 12.14% return. Now it's not as great as EWW, but even though it has fairly low volatility, it's not insanely low, but it's definitely not high, it still pays really, really well to trade GDX right now. And so just to kind of dovetail off of this for a second, this is why we started talking about, I think back in one of the shows in the 60s or so, we started talking about this low volatility trading strategy that we have back tested and we started to execute now on our pro and elite side because what we're finding is that even though 
some securities might have below the 50th IV rank, they still end up paying out really, really well on a return basis, and they still end up winning on a pretty good basis over time as well. In fact, what you often saw in show 71, for those of you who have listened to show 71, where we talked about exiting trades early, in that case, when we were looking at those back-tested TLT strangles, we had no IV filter. We were just entering trades all the time, regardless of IV, and it still ended up winning out at a really, really good rate. So GLD has been a good trading vehicle for us uh, for sure, and this is one of the reasons why, because even though it has low IV at 40, it still pays out on a return basis pretty good based on the margin that you have to put up. Now let's start looking into for these last four. So we looked at the first four ETFs, XLU, SBY, EWW, and GDX. The last four that we're going to look at are some stocks. So the first one that we're looking at is Tesla, T-S-L-A. Favorite trading vehicle, favorite topic of discussion in the forums for our members for Mm -hmm. sure. And in this case, Tesla has IV at 15. So really, really low IV for Tesla on a rank basis. It's trading at $192 per share, and if you were to sell the one standard deviation strangle in Tesla, you'd collect $420 in premium. So by far the largest premium that you can actually collect from everything that we've looked at, and that's naturally a factor of just the high stock price. The margin required to collect $420 in premium is $2,920, and 20, or $2,920. so 2900 bucks for a one standard deviation strangle in Tesla. Now, this is a really good return as well. It's about 14.38% return. And so again, it kind of proves the point that we're continuing to try to make again and again here, which is that even though sometimes it's not best to trade these high implied vault or low implied volatility stocks and ETFs, they still pay pretty well. So even though Tesla's IV is at 15, because Tesla is Tesla basically and very volatile and moves a lot, the market prices in a really high premium for the stock naturally, even at an IV rank of 15. Because remember, Tesla is going to have just naturally higher implied volatility than something that's like a big Dow, you know, 30 company, you know, that's a slow mover, you know, big pharmaceutical or chemical company. It's just naturally going to have more volatility and better option pricing. So it makes it a good trading vehicle. The next one that we're going to look at here, number six, is Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX. Now, Starbucks has a pretty decent implied volatility at 63 ranking. The stock itself is trading at 53. And to sell the one standard deviation strangle, you can collect $54.00. And the margin is $585. So on a return basis, that's about 9.23% return. So much less than Tesla and GDX and EWW, but better than XLU and SPY. So Starbucks ended up being a pretty decent trade. It's not the best trade you could make probably of the bunch, but it's actually a pretty decent trade. And mainly because that implied volatility is a little bit higher. The next one that we're going to look at, number seven here, is Twitter. The ticker symbol TWTR. IV rank right now is around 26. The stock is trading at 18. To sell the one standard deviation strangle, you could collect $65 per strangle, and the margin is $430. So that gives it about a 15.11% return, which is actually pretty crazy. I mean, it's like actually a really, really good return for something that has fairly low implied volatility ranking again. And mainly, this is just like Tesla. Twitter just naturally has a lot of volatility right now. I mean, even recently, the stock you know has been trading in like a $15 range. I mean, it's just been wild how much the stock has been trading. And so for that reason, you get compensated a lot for the margin that you actually have to put up as far as selling premium here in Twitter. So it ends up being a pretty decent trading vehicle once it's past earnings. The last one that we're going to look at, and we want to kind of throw one in here that was more of like a stable company, more of a you know non-Twitter, non-Tesla, non-big mover generally, and that is JP Morgan. So big company, big bank, a stable bank, obviously, and the stock right now has IV of 22. So it's in the same wheelhouse as Twitter and Tesla as far as IV rank goes. The stock itself is trading at 69, and to sell the one standard deviation strangle, you can collect $88, but you have to put up $1,000, it was exactly $1,000 of margin to cover that position. So $88, 
you ha- can collect in premium, but you got to put up $1,000 in margin for each of those contracts. Now, this is an 8.8% return. So you can see that with these bigger companies, even though they have Ivy rank the same as Twitter and uh, Tesla, et cetera, you can see that because it's a, just a bigger company and because IV generally is going to be lower. So volatility in JP Morgan is generally lower than just Tesla and Twitter. You're not going to get compensated as much for selling some premium in JP Morgan. Now, in this case, it's better than XLU and XLU has higher implied volatility rank right now at 58, but it's much better premium than XLU. So you'd want to even steer towards JP Morgan over XLU and SPY. Okay. So hopefully this has been really helpful. I know that we kind of went through those fast. Again, if you want to listen to this or download the show notes page, you can do that at optionalpha.com slash show 73. You can download the show notes, which will have all of this in there for you guys to look at. But really the concept that I'm trying to show you guys is that When you're looking at different short strangles and kind of asking yourself, okay, what is good pricing? You have to look at some different variables. You got to look at some different ETFs, some different stocks, some different relative, you know, names in the industry because you might get different pricing and different returns. And look, it's not that you have to go with the highest one. I want to make that disclaimer as well. You don't have to go with the highest one, but usually the best return on capital ends up also being the best possible trading opportunity, either with higher implied volatility or just better price action or better liquidity. It usually ends up being that case. But the concept that I want you guys to understand is that you have to look at these trades and really kind of price them out, do a little bit of digging because it's worth doing. You can see in the time that we've spent here together kind of analyzing just these eight different strangles, there's a vast difference in your ability to make money on some of these trades in your return on capital. And again, all of the ones that we looked at were at the 70% probability of success level. So statistically, you should win out at the same amount of time uh, doing this trade over and over and over again. But some trades are going to pay, in some cases, you know, almost 60, 70% more than other trades. So hopefully this was a really good example of kind of how I think about and how I look at short strangles. Again, it's not the only thing I look at, but it is a big factor in kind of looking at relative pricing and returns for a lot of different ETFs and stocks when making a decision about what securities we're going to get into. Now, the closing bell. Find out which stocks we're looking at right now, trades we're making, and hear our game plan moving forward. Moving forward. All right, so in today's closing bell segment, no surprise, we're actually going to get into the EWW strangle that we went over. Now, this was basically the third example of the short strangles from today's podcast. EWW right now is trading about 49 and IV rank is at 100 in this stock. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sell the 56 calls and the 44 puts, taking a credit of $93 on this thing. We're going to sell a bunch of these contracts and start building out our December position here. And again, the margin per strangle that we take in is just $495. So it's about a 18.78% return on capital. And again, we'll look to close out this trade early and manage it at about 50% of potential profit that we have. So we're collecting about $93 in premium. And that means about 50% of that will close out of the trade and, you know, bank the trade early. Again, as we discussed in show number 71, when we do that, we dramatically increase our win rate beyond 70%, reduce our drawdowns, increase our average P&L, and basically just recycle capital at a much faster pace. But in this case, it's really no surprise that we're doing EWW or shouldn't be. It's got the highest IV rank, which is great. It's got the best return on capital per margin requirement for each of these, which is also great. So really kind Kind of fits the wheelhouse for everything that we want to do here. And again, all we're doing is just setting it up like a normal balance neutral strangle, selling the 56 calls and the 44 puts down below the market. Thanks for listening to the Option Alpha podcast. If you liked what you heard, please drop by iTunes and leave a rating or comment. Plus, you can get everything. Free email updates for future shows, transcripts, video tutorials, case studies, and more. Just visit our website at Option Alpha. All right. Now, I truly hope you enjoyed today's show and got at least one thing out of it that you can apply right now to make you a smarter, 
more profitable trader and investor. And as always, you can get additional resources, links mentioned in the show, a little chart of all of the different strategies that we looked at today and all the different returns and prices and everything by going to the show notes page at optionalpha.com slash show 73. Again, that's just the number 73, optionalpha.com slash show 73. And until next time, happy trading.